Greetings everyone, my name is Etterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Megapony. During the last part, I defeated Magic Mare, Kind Mare, and Generous Mare. So, we have the three remaining Pony Masters, whose stages or boss fights are a lot more challenging compared to the first three. So, I'll start out with Honest Mare, aka Applejack, the elemental bearer of honesty who, oddly enough, is piloting a giant punch bot or punch mech. Yeah, the rest of the Pony Masters or Bearers of Harmony, they're just themselves ponies, but here we have Applejack piloting a mech for some reason. Yeah, I don't remember most most other World Masters in other titles, they don't pilot mechs, they're just themselves, but here we have something that looks somewhat like a big eye. Kinda strange, but we'll be facing her at the end of the stage. We start out with these mech tools, and here are the main enemy, or one of the main enemies that make this stage quite dangerous. I would say this is the toughest stage to go through, Buster only. The first enemy are those timber wolves, and the second enemy are these apple bat fruit bats. What makes the fruit bats so dangerous is that once they pass over you or get close to you, they'll drop those buckets full of fruit in a downward spread pattern. The thing is though, when facing shielded enemies or even the tougher enemies like the timber wolves, it can be quite dangerous or hard to dodge. Especially in these segments where, if you get too close to them, uh, they can be a little bit odd and start firing the apples at a little bit earlier pace. Thankfully, they only take one buster shot to destroy. And that was a demonstration of using the stare against the Sniper Joes or Pony Joes, it just one-shots them. And yeah, the, timber, the timber wolves are quite durable. And what they do is that, once they get close to you, uh, once they're on screen, they'll wait a while, fire a orb at your current position, and then they'll jump towards you. It can be quite dangerous and hard to hit them, especially without using stuff like the Magic Wave, which tears right through them, or just getting close to them and using the Buster. Basically, the Magic Wave is the best weapon to use against them, mainly because you can hit them to a 3 times per shot. Keep in mind though, the magic for the Magic Wave, you can only have 3 Magic Waves on screen at once. And that counts even partial of the orbs, like if you have 3 of those remnant orbs, you can't fire any more of those Magic Waves. The stair also one-shots these timber walls and reduces them back to the timber pieces that they usually were, or unanimates them. Which is one of the best weapons to deal with them, but unfortunately the, the, the stair doesn't really have as much ammo, so you gotta save it. Thankfully, the stair is not this robot master or pony master's weakness. AJ's weakness is the magic wave. And the musical track for the stage is a remix of Metal Man's theme, remixed with a certain team from the show. As usual, I'll list in the description what the musical tracks were remixed with. This is another screen where using the stair would be so much better and speed up the process, but sadly don't have it. Also, here's a demonstration of the Gem Seeker. Over here, the, the Gem Seeking capabilities work pretty well, but over here you'll see that how the Gem Seeker can act a little bit Strangely. You can also fire the Mega Buster and certain other special weapons while having the Gem Seeker up, but you, if you have it fully up, you can't really use other weapons, and if you only have it partially up, you can't use other weapons to their fullest potential, so it's not as good as the Seasonal Barrier and Dr. Wally's Final Attack pre-nerf. Also, as you saw there, even though I was directly just above that Pony Joe, all of those Gem Seeker slots or gems actually just passed right by him. Yeah, the seeking capability, because of how it's curved, is kind of wonky. It's not the highly accurate like the Jet Missile is in Unlimited, or stuff like the... what was it? The Hawk Seeker in Dr. Wally's Final Attack. So you need to be at a certain angle in order to hit those enemies. But we're at the end of the barn, so we're going to be facing the boss. Anyways, here's a battle against Honest Mirror, aka AJ. You can only damage her at the exposed part of the mech, aka where she's piloting it. AJ begins by jumping at her position and trying to stomp you. After landing on the ground, she'll soon propel herself forward, trying to punch you with her mech. So repeat this process two more times before jumping in the opposite direction of her last punch, landing on one side of the screen. AJ will then start up a vacuum, pulling you in and sucking up apples from the other side of the screen. Make sure to run in the opposite direction to avoid getting pulled into the mech's large hitbox. Each apple can rush in at one of four heights, similar to a devil fight. You can walk under the top two ones, but have to jump over the bottom two. You can sneak in some shots when this is happening, but you need to be on on your guard so you can resume running away. 
After ten apples vacuumed in, she'll flex the mix muscles and soon fire a spread of seven apples. The easiest way to dodge this is to walk up to the other side of the screen, but be warned, she'll soon repeat the, her stomp punch pattern. Just keep dodging her attacks and carefully placing shots, and you'll soon persevere. Thankfully, the only RNG involved are the vacuumed apples. And there we have it. Before I learned of her pattern and how uh, strict it can be or how you can manipulate it, I thought this was the toughest World Master fight. But after finding this, I think that Rainbow or Pinky are the harder ones. And by defeating her, we get the Apple Bucker, which is kind of a more situational weapon. It's great in generous Mare stage because you can fire in an arcing pattern, but you can also buck the apples, spending some extra weapon energy, and you can fire it at a straight ahead or in a diagonal pattern. But it can be a little bit challenging to use, especially when jumping, so I don't really use it as much. But I do use it when I want to fire it in an arcing pattern downwards. Alright, it's time to go through Loyal Mare stage, aka Rainbow Dash, the elemental bearer of the element of loyalty. So this is the prerequisite Sky stage. I presume this is taking place in Cloudsdale, as evidenced by all these Rainbow Falls, and all of the cloud backgrounds and the cloud platforms. Thankfully, the Rainbow Falls don't actually push you away like the Waterfalls did in Mega Man 5. And here is one of the more annoying enemies of this game, these uh, Wonder Bolts, which we'll see soon enough. First, let's take care of these Pony Joes. Yeah, going through the stage with the stairs makes this so much easier because now you can just deal with all of those spines as well as Pony Joes easily. Not to mention all of those Metools, because it'll one-shot all of them. You'll have to take the uh, left route in order to get a extra gem, or a big gem. But the collision detection with Mega Pony can be a little bit hard to, to gas grasp, so you have to be a little bit careful going through this, and you'll see it's, it'll snap at a certain point. Otherwise, if you're not careful, you'll skew yourself on the top spikes. Unless you bought, unless of course you bought a spike guard from the shop. Here are the 20 extra gems. Now here's the toughest anyway I was talking about. These Wonder Bolts. The thing is though, whenever they're jumping. You can't actually damage them. You can only damage them just after or while they're firing the, that spark at you, or when they're trying to buck that spark into you. But that can be quite dangerous because if you if you just mistime it, they'll either just jump right above you, ramming right into you, or if you time it a little bit too early, just after they fire that spark, they'll just jump into you. Now, when you're firing those shots at at them, not when they're bucking, they'll try just doing a spin jump over you or onto you. And they can repeatedly do this, which makes them really challenging to deal with. Not to mention, you, they're actually immune to all for, forms of damage, unless they're jumping. Uh, I mean, unless when, when they're bucking those sparks. They're even immune to this there, so it, it makes it even more annoying. I presume they're also re resistant against the Gem Seeker. Although the Gem Seeker is Rainbow Dash's weakness in this stage. As you can see over here, these Wonder Bolts can also fly, which makes it even more of an annoyance. We'll see an even more annoying version of this enemy, more dangerous version, in the Discord Fortress stages. Thank goodness the Rainbow Falls don't push you forward or backwards, otherwise this segment would be even more of a pain to get through. Yeah, these blocks are also fall over, but don't worry, there aren't any of these Wonder Bolts to worry about, for the most part. I don't know why there's spikes and there's a large trail at the bottom you can go through. Maybe there's a secret there, but even the Sonic Rain Boom, aka the dash weapon of this game, it doesn't propel you forward enough to actually get those items. I could have taken that extra life, but I decided not to risk it. Yeah, these segments seem a lot more dangerous, but in reality, there aren't any pippies in this stage, so it isn't as dangerous as, for example, Airman stage, even though that this stage remixes Airman's team with one team from the show. And we reached the end of this stage. I decided to do a damage boost over here because of how finicky Mega Pony's hitbox can be, plus I didn't want to skewer myself on the instant death spikes. Like I said in the first part, these, this game stages are around Mega Man 2 length, so they aren't really that long, as compared to certain other fan games. Anyways, here's a battle against Loyal Mare, aka Rainbow Dash. She's tied with AJ as being the hardest pre-fortress boss to defeat Friendship Buster only. Like Kind Mare, she has a rather exploitable AI pattern for her first phase. When you shoot at her, she'll jump up, do a quick dash, and fly up a little, before ramming into the ground, sending two leg beams across the ground. After that, she'll resume walking normally to the other side of the screen before turning back hitting the wall. 
you can repeat the shooting pattern, but if you're really skilled, you can actually shoot her again when she hits the ground. Be careful while doing that, because you may cause her to pick another move that's really hard to dodge. Without using this pattern, Dash can be really hard to fight due to her un unpredictable nature and rapid movements. She is one of the fastest Pegasi alive, after all. Now, once you drop her to about near a third of her health, she begins taking evasive maneuvers. This is where the fight gets really crazy and Dash becomes hard to defeat without her weakness. She basically starts using a crazier version of the Wonderbolt Spin Jump, and starts bouncing around the top of the screen, firing three sparks at her position before ramming it to the ground, creating that same Elect Beam Shockwave. Make sure to fire at her from a distance at this point, so you have time to dodge her potential uh, Rainbow Rams. Really, this is a fast reaction battle, so you need to be on your toes to survive. When I didn't, I was forced to use one or two E-Tanks during my test runs, but once I got used to it, I was able to survive. Now, I did edit out one death during this part. But other than that, it was fine. In fact, I expected to die more often, but apparently I didn't. And by defeating her, we get our weapon, the Sonic Rain Boom, or as I like to call it, the Rainbow Dash. It's like the Comet Dash from Mega Man Unlimited, that allows you to dash through enemies with invulnerability frames, but it's faster and shorter range compared to the Comet Dash, so you need to be a little bit cautious while using it. Because you can more easily get hit by enemies, and you don't have Rainbow Dash's extra utility while using her weapon. Anyways, let's go to Laugh Mare stage, the final of the six Pony Masters, aka Pinkie Pie, the elemental bearer of the element of laughter. So this stage has remixed Crashman's team with the show's song Giggle at the Ghosties, I believe. So we have these cannons which were introduced back in Kind Mare stage. And we have candy colored tellies as well. As you may see, this entire stage is dessert team. With all these chocolate blocks, the candy, the cakes, and we have the Crashman platforms returning. This stage is one of the most difficult Roadmaster stage to go through, mainly because of all the spikes. I strongly suggest getting one of the spike guards from the shop, mainly for the second part of the stage. Here is the mini boss of the stage, which we will be fighting again, Gummy, or Mega Gummy. Basically, he'll wait for a while before firing four of those energy orbs at your last position. So you need to guide him out of the way and try jumping at them to avoid getting hit by them. Here's a demonstration of the Rainbow Dash ability, aka Sonic Rainbow. Yeah, the Gem Seeker can work wonders, especially at close range, but at longer ranges it can be a bit problematic. Not to mention, it's not really that powerful of a shield blocking weapon. It's not as good, for example, like the Jewel Satellite from Mega Man 9. And in order to access the, this extra life, you'll need to use the Sonic Rain Boom. There are no rush utilities in this game. Plus, the Sonic Rain Boom is Laughmare's weakness as well. This here is the second time you fight Robogami. Really, I was trying to show off the Gem Seeker, but as you can see here, they can also be guided by... Gummy's shots can actually be used like a flare, so it can actually lure away all of those shots, so using the Gem Seeker isn't really that useful. And here's the segment I was referring to, which is why I wanted, uh, why I strongly suggest buying one of those spike guards. The falling screen and the one falling this screen is the one which I died the most. Really because the balloon interacting with Mega Pony is the odd hitbox, really the balloons have a really odd hitbox. At this point you have to keep running forward to avoid getting skewered by spikes. I almost died over there and so I strongly suggest going to the stage after you get the Sonic Rainbow so you can dash forward avoiding getting hit. But this is the segment I was talking about. Because Mega Pony has a more horizontally inclined hitbox, more horizontally wide hitbox, you can easily get hit by one of the spikes on the left or right, and because you need to curve upwards in order to avoid getting hit by either one of them and in order to ride those, ride the balloons, yeah, you can easily get killed, like I did about six times while testing, and when I first played this, I actually died at this part of the stage about a dozen times, till I buy the spike guard. Also, like I said, because you have the, if you have a several gem seekers up, you can't use certain other special weapons, and for special weapons which only have one shot at a time, well, you can't use stuff like a rainbow dash until you drop it. Take the right route if you want to get another big gem. 
But really, that's what I have to say about this stage. You need to just do, really the hardest part of the stage was the, were those three spike fill screens. But after that, going through the stage is really simple as long as you avoid getting hit by these tellies and whatnot. Really, this is one of the better farming screens because you can farm up life energy, weapon energy, and potentially gems pretty easily. Speaking of which, in terms of the musical track remixes, well, in terms of the musical tracks, like I said in the first part, I like most of the Mega Man 2 original Broadmaster Master teams over this game's remixes. Outside of this stage's team, as well as Kindmare's team, I prefer the original Mega Man 2 teams. For Kindmare's stage team, as well as this stage team, I like them better compared to the originals, as I didn't really like Crashman's original team because I thought it was rather odd. Plus, Flashman's team was... well, I felt like Kindmare's team really improved upon it. Anyway, here's the battle against Laughmare, aka Pinkie Pie. She comes armed with her party cannon. She'll start out by walking towards you, firing pellets at regular intervals. Whenever you jump over her, she'll pause, point her cannon upwards, and fire a pellet at you. You'll need to jump over her while she's briefly paused. Once she reaches the wa wall, she'll either repeat this or move on to her next series of attacks. She'll fire a series of four pellets across the screen and release five balloons into the air. She'll use her cannon to fly up and try knocking two of those balloons into you before rocketing into the remaining tree going off screen and reappearing on ground level from the other side trying to ram into you. If she hits those three balloons, she can bounce them back into you. The pattern then resets. If you can get used to dodging her projectiles and manipulating when she fires the cannon upwards, this fight isn't that bad. There appears to be little to no RNG involved other than when deciding to release all of those balloons. And after defeating Pinkie Pie, we get her weapon, which is the Party Cannon. This is one of the more useful special weapons in the game. If you press the fire button, it'll fire out a deflated balloon forwards, and if you press the fire button again while it's on screen, it'll inflate and start traveling upwards. So you can hit pesky enemies who are directly above you. This is especially useful in certain stages. Well then, in this part, I defeated Honest Mare, Loyal Mare, and Laugh Mare, and unlocked the Discord Fortress stages. In the next part, I'll pay a visit to the shop, and then enter Discord's fortress to put an end to his chaotic desires. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!